Today we are back with a very interesting video looking at two community favorites, Tudor the Black Bay 58 and Omega the Seamaster 300 meters. So let's start with the price. You can get the Tudor for 3,200 euros and the Seamaster for 5,700 euros. So there's more than 2,000 euro difference between these watches and let's see if this shows. As most of you should know, Tudor is the absolute king of value for money in the, let's call it entry level luxury sector. Let's start with things where Tudor is actually better than the more expensive Seamaster. We have a incredible 70 hour power reserve on the Black Bay as with the new Rolex calibers, whereas we only have 55 hours in the Seamaster. For me personally, the Black Bay 58 wears a little better as it is a 39 millimeter watch, whereas the 42 or 41 uh, Omega Seamaster wears a little large, but is still very wearable even for me. But this is of course subjective. Maybe some people prefer a larger watch or others prefer a smaller watch. And if you prefer even larger watches, stay tuned because I also filmed the Tudor Pelagos and the Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean. And that video will be released on this channel very soon. The Omega is 300 meter water resistance, whereas the Black Bay 58 is 200 meter water resistant. The Omega also offers a date at six o'clock, which is my favorite position for a date complication. I think it's much more uh, understated and not so in your face as a three o'clock date. Both watches come in a stainless steel case and a stainless steel bracelet. The Omega has a ceramic bezel with enamel inserts, whereas the Tudor has an aluminum bezel, more kind of vintage inspired, and it is a very nice brushed look, whereas the ceramic is of course a little more shiny. But the ceramic doesn't stop there. For the Seamaster, you also have a ceramic dial. So this dial will never change color, will never tarnish. And you can also see with the small inscription below the handset that this is a zirconium oxide ceramic dial. I couldn't actually find exactly what material the dial of the Black Bay 58 is, but I would guess it is some sort of metal, for example, brass maybe. And it is very beautifully rendered in blue, in a matte blue, and I really, really like the color. It really changes a lot when you play with it in the light. By the way, let me know which of these two you prefer. Do you prefer Black Bay or do you prefer the Seamaster? Let us know in the comments below and also explain why. For both of these watches, you have a lot of options of materials, bracelets. You can get them on NATOs and rubber straps and on leather straps. You can get the Omega in two tones. You can get them in rose gold two toned. You can get both of these watches even in black ceramic, being a little more expensive, of course, and I think a little larger than the stainless steel variants. I think the Black Bay 58 is a great option if you want to go a little cheaper. Of course, 3,200 euros is not cheap at all. But if you look at the contenders of this kind of luxury dive watch, Tudor really is almost unbeatable. But you know, for 2,000 euros more, what do you actually get for the Seamaster? Well, you get quite a few advancements which the Tudor doesn't have. You get, for example, a helium escape valve. To be honest, I think it's a little gimmicky. This watch is only 300 meter water resistant and a helium escape valve is for pressure diving. And I don't think most of the people that wear a Seamaster are actually pressure divers. On top of that, I think the indices look a little more beautiful. They look a little more polished, also matching the more shiny dial and bezel. You get a date complication. You get a open case back showing the beautiful Omega coaxial movements. A very big thing is Omega's master chronometer. So this is a master chronometer while the Tudor Black Bay is only a COSC chronometer. Master chronometers are certified on top of COSC certifications, adding additional tests, certifying even more accuracy and robustness of these watches. So if you want to get the best certification or the most advanced certification, Omega got you covered because they have a few master chronometer watches and they are really on the top of their game at this point. The first ones to release these master chronometers, whereas Tudor is following suit now with their ceramic versions, for example. Now, if you look at the bracelets, 
I have to say both of these bracelets are not my favorites. I don't really like the interlinks that are kind of polished and set in between. I think it just adds too much to the Seamaster bracelets and I prefer a more simple bracelet. But the rivet style bracelet that we see on the Black Bay 58 is also not my favorite, but I would say the, the Black Bay 58 has a little nicer bracelet. If we get to the clasp, let's start with the Omega clasp. You have a double deployant clasp with a very nice push uh, pusher extension for tool-free adjustment on the go, which is something that is really practical and I love to see it on a watch. When we go to the Tudor, Tudor makes very nice clasps. They have a safety latch like Rolex divers and in that sense, a very nice and sturdy clasp, but unfortunately no tool-free adjustment. So you're gonna need a tool to adjust your watch on the go. Now let's talk about the personal stuff. Let's talk about design. Of course, this is my own interpretation of design. I think the Tudor Black Bay is a more understated watch. You have a clean dial with indices and hands. By the way, I came to love the snowflake hands. I think they look really unique and make Tudor watches very recognizable. When I compare this dial to the Seamaster dial, the Seamaster dial is a little more busy with this wave pattern that I have to be honest, I never really liked. Of course, it is beautiful when you see it in person and many people might like it, but this is my personal opinion of the design. On the other hand, I think the ceramic on the bezel and the dial makes this watch very shiny and look very new, which many people of course enjoy. For me, the Helium Escape Valve is a little bit of a disturbing factor visually. I don't really like to see it on a watch. I think it's a little, as I said before, gimmicky. I think it doesn't have to be there. Both of these watches are, in my opinion, very recognizable. The Omega on one hand with their skeleton hands, which they've been using for a while now on their Seamasters, as well as the bracelet. They have been using this style of bracelet for years now. And the addition of the Helium Escape Valve makes this watch very recognizable. The Tudor flies a little more under the radar, but as soon as you look on the dial and you see those snowflake hands, you immediately know that you're looking at a Tudor. So which one should you get? I think the Tudor Black Bay 58 is amazing value for money. So if you want to go a little cheaper on your watch or maybe also a little smaller, the Black Bay 58 comes in 39 millimeters for 3,200 euros. The addition of the 70 hour power reserve and the sleek design of this watch makes this perfect if you care about a long power reserve as well as a dial that is not so busy and might even fly under the radar. You should get the Omega Seamaster if you want maybe a little larger watch. If you like the Helium Escape Valve and the additional 100 meter water resistance as well as the ceramic all over this watch. Of course the Omega is a little more expensive or a lot more expensive with over 2000 euros over the Black Bay but you get a lot for these 2000 euros. You get a Helium Escape Valve, Master Chronometer Certified, you get a lot of ceramic, you get a tool-free adjustment on the clasp, you get a date function and a beautiful open case back to see the beautiful caliber. Of course, both of these watches have in-house calibers made by Tudor or Omega. By the way, a big thank you to Les Ambassadeurs Luxembourg for allowing us to film their beautiful watches. If you are in Luxembourg, then definitely come check them out. They have many, many very interesting watch brands and they are always very nice. They will show you whatever you want. But yes, this concludes this little comparison video between Omega dive watches and Tudor dive watches. Let us know in the comments below if you enjoyed this kind of content and I finish in a great way with my hands full of watches. Thank you guys for watching. See you.